Ah, Invasion. Two years have passed since you were launched as the last community made update, and almost inside jobbed itself into the Poopy Joe incident. More on whatever I just said later. Team Fortress 2 Invasion, an update like no other that brought us the classic in- alien invader theme that spoke to our galactic warfare loving space trotter inner child. Whether you were 4 or 40, it was definitely something we could all get behind. Put on your tinfoil hats, everybody. You're in for a ride I didn't even know I started till it was too late. Starting with the leaks. Invasion launched on October 6th, 2015, three months after its unintentional full SFM leak the summer beforehand. Mind you, there was little to no hint to such an update and to see a short but atmospheric animation rivaling the quality of expiration date and end of the line appear and disappear just a few days before Gunmetal dropped, left us feeling really excited for what lied ahead. Hidden in Gunmetal's poster map, Powerhouse was full of various secrets and teasers suggesting the coming of an alien invasion, as well as the later introduction of spaceships in the spaceships in the skybox, of maps old and new. Let's not forget the undeniable, I believe, posters in spawn rooms. The update was believed to launch on September 17th after Crit's cast and humorous radio skits portraying a radio news station broadcasting the events of the invasion, which were supposedly leading up to it. The amount of teasing must have meant this was going to be a big update. It was, sorta. And the hype was at its fullest as we also neared the annual Halloween update. What did Invasion change? Starting with big changes, we're going to begin with maps and game modes. Invasion introduced the first official non-Halloween event map known as 2 Fort Invasion. I mean, they have a giant saucer crashed into Red Base, along with Blue Under Quarantine, and some next gadgets in the basements of both. Some pretty stellar stuff. Next was the sadly brief return of Arena Mode in the latest map, Buyer. The one thing that wasn't also forgotten was the introduction of player destruction, where eliminating a player has them drop a beer bottle. The goal is to deliver them to the briefly returning spaceship. However, those with the highest bottle count are visible with the team colored outline to everyone on the map. The enemy team can steal your amassed bottles and deliver deliver it to the spaceship themselves. The game mode delivered the update defining meme thanks to the map specific announcers like iconic phrase, we are in the beam. Player destruction returned for Halloween 2016's Pit of Death map where instead of bottles you collect souls per eliminated enemy. Side note, I recently played an incarnation of player destruction on a TF crew stream called Monster Mash. It's really promising, trust me. Items and unusuals. Next was the first non-Halloween, still limited, goddammit, unusual effects with Nebula being the most popular, yet conveniently also restricted effect. Accompanied by that nonsense were themed weapon skins such as the Shooting Star, the reskin of the Machina, and especially the elusive team colored Bat Saber. They aren't item drops, nor are they on the Manco store, so it makes the crate still worthwhile to unbox especially now that they carry tiered lists introduced in Gunmetal. All of this was locked behind the purchase of the Invasion Pass, making even the crate drops limited. Last but not least, Invasion introduced the first event-themed taunt, the Burst Chester. Moving into the underground, we have Behind the Scenes. Invasion had mapping and cosmetic contests beforehand, with people working on one thing to working on another. Loads of work and preparation were made into this update, as any would expect, but quite often overlook. Following the cosmetic conquest contest, say that five times fast, we were over a hundred submitted cosmetics, with with most featured on these two workshop pages, which I'll link below. Many submissions bore even more laser weapons, holographic arms, holographic legs, holographic scout's mom, the much desired laser pan, Star Trek shirts, Everything that beats out the Graylian. So much stuff. Let's take a look at some of the big players behind the scenes. First up, we have the project lead known as the Ronin. Ronin wanted to take things to the next level. Cosmetics are a big part of TF2 and no update would be complete without them, but he wanted to sink his teeth into something more by, by providing some actual playable content known as the maps. 
It's worth noting that a lot of these plans were hatched before End of the Line was even being considered as a community update. He already had friends in the item creation community from his own work there. This was a chance to bring together all of the major content creating communities of Team Fortress 2 with everyone playing their part. Next we have the particle effect creator known as K.O. Fanatic. When he's not being convicted of being a witch, this guy is recognized for his custom effects in the invasion short and his effects on Watergate. He has currently worked on Rave in the Grave and Death by Disco effects launched last Halloween, as well as the assortment of effects be theme behind the Mayan and Frontline assets. Next we have item maker known as Void. Void was the host of the Cosmetic Conquest contest themed around the space conquering madness. He alone was a major item contributor to the update while also investing a, investing a $200 prize pool to set things in motion. He even created the Meet Your Makers page which allowed discreet visual teasers to the update as well as the secret page with the caption they are watching on a lone screen. Creator of Probed known as Yui Crash. Crash is a publicly known mapper often inviting fans to test his devious creations on his servers during his live streams. He was a participant in the Mercs vs Aliens mapping contest and earned notable recognition for his work on Probed. He was invited to be on the super secret invasion team and was one of many to have worked together with the other map and prop makers to also deliver to Fort Invasion. Lastly we have the radio team Critzcast. The team was approached to perform radio skits to tie in with the reveals of various aspects of Invasion. Given the green light from Valve, they set to the task of creating a radio series that released in phases along, along with the third phase for the update itself. The first episode was to be an introduction, the second a call to arms for makers, the third would be released alongside the update itself. They put in months of writing rewriting, recording, and editing drama. Fun fact, the beeping noises that you hear at the start of the broadcast is actually Morse code for Can't Stop the Signal, which is the description of their respective hat, the Lo-Fi Long Wave. The same Morse code was almost put in the short teaser video, but was decided to be a different headed message. Another side note, the message was Poopy Joe was an inside job, which led to an entire conspiracy thread with leads dating back to 2012's Doomsday map. However, the ARG for that led to a Doomsday Halloween event following the Invasion update. Upon that, they hosted Void's work on the Meet Your Ma Makers page. There are plenty more contributors listed in the creators page here. Now, here's to the big reason why a lot of people have some iffy feelings about Invasion. N now we're on to the big controversy. One of the biggest factors unconsciously affecting the update, even now, was the lack of a system structure and most critically, who was getting paid and how much. Ultimately being decided amongst themselves, there was no real way to measure one's time and effort against another's. No matter how fairly the cut seems to be made, no one but the individual people creating their small part of the content is aware of the efforts that went into creating said content. A lot of people were promised a lot of things. Even some percentages, while never reduced technically, went from being a percentage of a total profit down to a percentage of a percentage of a percentage of a much smaller unit of profits. Although a lot of the service anger is directed towards the project manager, but it turns out that not even he walked away with a big cut. The majority of his own cut they gave away to pull in new talent for the update. It's safe to say a pretty significant amount of the top TF2 content creation community won't work with the people who apparently screwed them over. Note, presumably different from people, different people from the leakers. A very last minute change to the percentages cost some, some pretty big figures, some in, even in the 5 range, and it was take it or leave it. Invasion was not the first update to face such a dilemma over fun misre misrepresentation. Robotic Boogaloo saw a mass of its shares going directly to the organization team, so it is not the first time this has happened. Long story short, some people took advantage of the trust they had with each other, and in the end, Valve seems to have decided to not allow that to happen again. 
With that, a Reddit, t- a Reddit thread titled The Invasion Rumor Thread was started, acknowledging various team members speaking out anonymously about how things were structured. Now, we're moving on to the long-term effects. Many people still blame Valve for the lack of updates, almost rightfully so, being delivered with, with over 400 days since Meet Your Match, not even acknowledging 2016 Scheme Fortress with the double unboxing and usual hell in combination with Meet Your Match's all-class crates, which also lacking a dedicated update page. The main complaint is, why not accept a community update? Well, that's where lessons from Invasion come into play. After the clearly demonstrated unguided use of power and communication amongst team members, Valve has decided to ensure updates are run and led by them. The blame for lack of updates, ironically, belongs to the community, funny enough. There's a reason why Invasion was the last 100% community-driven update, and future community projects like Frontline and Mayan are still paying for it now. Valve can't trust its community, so it's up to them to figure out how the, how the future of the game will unfold. However, that does not mean we can't still contribute. Valve still reaches out for community content, but for the updates, they must direct it themselves. Scream Fortress and Smith Smith still need our support, and there are plenty of workshop contributions dedicated to Scream Fortress alone. Now, the verdict. Invasion single-handedly delivered the latest round of major community-contributed content, bringing forth player destruction as a whole new game mode, still being seen today, very memorable theme maps alongside 2 Ford Invasion, highly desirable limited cosmetics, weapons, and, un- and unusual effects. Invasion had its bumps and has hurt the community in a way, but has also done it some good demonstrating the projects that people are clearly capable of. Prior to making this video, I invited discussion about Invasion and promised I'd share some responses. It's the least I can do for them steering me to loads of information I had no idea was even tied to the very update. Some responses are, It was such a weird update. The past that didn't provide contracts, the crates that costed 8 euros each on launch day, which covered the cost of past of the past, the short return of arena mode, and of course, the star of the show, that stupid beam on Watergate. It was fun. The reskins were cool, the maps were nice too, and we are in the beam. It was a nice community update. The theme was really interesting. Who doesn't love a cheesy 50s sci-fi movie? The maps were gorgeous, especially 2 Fort Invasion. The SFM was amazing, and it had a pretty good bunch of cosmetics and reskins. Overall, I see it as a pretty solid update being a community one, and the theme alone was worth it. Probed and Watergate are the greatest maps to ever grace this game. L- I liked it. I saw the collection of S- on Steam before it came out, and it hyped me up. Probably the w- only community update in my time of playing TF2 that didn't completely suck. I mean, yeah, reskins and all, but they are gorgeous. Some of the hat prices are ridiculous, like the Corona and Starduster, they're, they're great, but a little overpriced. Invasion, I felt, was the only community update that got the formula right. It had everything people really wanted that was met reasonable with, kinds, with these kinds of projects, including the maps, the reskins, and the promotional material, and of course, the hats. My only issues with the update itself was the fact that it got slightly overshadowed by Halloween, similar to End of the Line in Smithsmiths, except that Halloween had contracts that year, giving an incentive to not play Invasion maps, and contracts should have been included in the event. The maps were fun and new. The coin was a fun and creative way to fuel objectives and support the creators, and the foresh- foreshadowing was also nice. Now, onto my personal opinion, Invasion is one of my all-time favorite updates. It's true and definitely has loads of behind the scenes stuff to check out for content creators out there. It's probably the only update that's still worth unboxing in. I've learned so much about how Invasion affected different areas of the community. For this video, I hope you liked my findings, and to end this off, let's let's continue the discussion. How do you think Invasion changed here too? Let's discuss in the comments below, 
And with that, this is Tobias and I'll catch you guys later.